Hey, it's Mike here, and today a new study from one of nature's journals is leading to headlines such as experts find cavemen ate mostly vegan, debunking paleo diet, which of course ruffled some feathers and led to some fun Facebook comments that we'll cover. Like, I love these articles. Every time I see one, I eat another animal. Keep making stuff up and I'll keep eating. So we're gonna hear from the authors. We're gonna crack open the study, learn the basics, see what methods they use that were newer to improve upon previous methods, as well as look at just the background of science that we have on this, which is sort of shifting the picture here. Anyway, let's get to what the researchers say. They say, quote, our analysis showed that these hunter-gatherer groups, they included an important amount of plant matter, wild plants to their diet, which changed our understanding of the diet of pre-agricultural populations. There's been a lot of debate about how much meat was eaten by our ancestors. And well, I don't think it matters as much in terms of what we should eat today. What we should eat today should be what's healthy for us and what the research shows is healthy. And in terms of a plant-based diet, we see lower disease rates, etc. stuff I talk about all of the time. But I'm also just really interested in archeology, span so I love this stuff. And then we also have people on like the carnivore diet saying that humans just ate meat throughout human history, and so we're designed to only eat meat, otherwise things go wrong. You know, denying the fact that red meat is a carcinogen according to the WHO for us, but uh, not for lions. Anyway, you get that point. But let's get to the question of bias first. Sometimes I like to hit that as well well as funding, was this all just part of some weird vegan propaganda? Like this one Facebook person says, vegans clearly wrote this dodgy article. However, there's no indication that any of these authors are vegan and there's several of them which have used roughly the same title, perhaps to make people like this person engage with it and get them more clicks. But also to the authors of the article, no indication that they were vegan at all, especially, you know, vegans don't tend to use bovine liver powder as a control. And you know, this is a legit publication. It's from Nature's Ecology and Evolution Journal. And it was funded by legit non-vegan organizations you know, like the Max Planck Institute. But moving to the basics of the study, it looked at pre-agricultural humans that were in Tafaralt, Morocco. This is North Africa. And they were from, you know, 13,000 to 15,000 years old. The bones, not the people. And I should emphasize that they were people. These are homo sapiens, which apparently some people missed. I mean, to one Facebook commenter responding to the notion that they were mostly vegan with, and now they are extinct. But no, homo sapiens are not extinct. And I'm assuming he's mixing them up with Neanderthals, which have bred into us. So they're technically extinct, but they also kind of live on through us. Some of us have a little bit more Neanderthal than others. You probably know one of those people off the top of your head, but I will say Neanderthals get a bad rap. First of all, they dominated Europe for 300,000 years, virtually all of that without humans until 40,000 years ago. Anyway, what about the methods of the study? Well, they used a comprehensive multi-isotopic approach, which included zinc, strontium, carbon, nitrogen, and sulfur isotopes in bone and teeth. And as they say, some of these are new isotope tracers that are more sensitive to plant consumption. And what is this actually showing? Well, looking to our classic isotopes, which is carbon and nitrogen, from Durham University, quote, the isotopic composition of the carbon and nitrogen in collagen reflects the isotopic composition primarily of the plant and animal protein in foods eaten by a person while the bones and teeth were forming and collagen was being synthesized. But these especially can have limitations related to the environment such as dryness, the elemental makeup of the soil, and also soil fungi networks, mycorrhizae. Anyway, they combat this by also comparing local animal isotopes like herbivores, carnivores, etc., to gauge where they are. And it is also the case that carnivores have used these isotope ratios to say, oh, look, look at how much meat various populations were eating. Clearly we're meant to eat only meat, but it is the case that you know mistakes can be made in this area as the study itself mentions. Doing this the wrong way can overestimate meat consumption by 60 to 80%, which is one of many ways that animal consumption has been overestimated. We'll cover more later on, but let's get to those main results. And first of all, just how the authors were surprised at how plant-based these people were, quote, our results unequivocally demonstrate a substantial plant-based component component in the diets of these hunter-gatherers. This distinct dietary pattern challenges the prevailing notion of high reliance on animal proteins among pre-agricultural human groups. So I can whip through some of the different isotope results, starting with 
nitrogen and from this chart yeah this this one blue triangle guy was right down there with the herbivores straight up rolling with the herbies others weren't quite as far down but still highly plant-based and then as for the carbon results looking to this chart we can just look at this chunk which is the herbivores in that area in tafferalt and then we have the tafferalt people and you can just see that major overlap there and for the zinc results they say that they found higher zinc tooth enamel content which indicates less animal consumption going as far as to say quote these values are close to those of tafferalt herbivores so what were these moroccan ancient people munching on well they say they lived in a forest and they were eating things like acorns other nuts as well as wild legumes that's what survived at least and they also go as far as to hypothesize that you know the children in this group were weaned onto starchy foods but it is worth mentioning that by no means was this population fully vegan the researchers say quote it must be stressed that the tafferalt humans studied here were not strict vegetarians a ridiculous word for vegetarian but a great word for a vegan italian restaurant and i want to say this fits into a growing picture that yeah our ancestors weren't fully vegan why would they choose to not eat something that is available to them but it's also the case that we probably weren't eating as much meat as people thought i mean we have this study which also shattered some paradigms which adjusted for sampling bias at archaeological sites and bones and things like that and found really no increase in human meat consumption during key brain growth periods. I have a whole video on that one. And there's just how technology is advancing and we have just various other biases like as this study even mentions that obviously bones last longer than plant matter in general. However, we've been able to now look at dental plaques in addition to that. And through those fossilized plaques, we've been able to find a ton of different plant species, even to Neanderthals that are super plant-based as well. This is making a larger picture. Now, as this Guardian article mentions, quote, Neanderthals from El Cidrone showed no evidence of meat eating after investigating their plaque. And then we also have how the science of these isotopes can exaggerate things as well, in addition to just that 60 to 80 percent overestimate that the study mentions we also have as they say how cooking through charring can actually increase the nitrogen 15 isotope count which can make plants eaten by humans look more like they were eating animal products in the end i once again don't think that what prehistoric people ate should have the ultimate bearing on what we eat i mean we have a lot of evidence of you know cannibalism in the human past so that's not like a justification that we should all be cannibal or prescription for it but again, I love this stuff. And it's also just really interesting to see how the field is advancing. They're learning from their mistakes. They're using new methods, new isotopes. But of course, the headlines like these, which are going to keep coming as we find more and more plants at these sites, are just gonna make people mad, these Facebook commenters mad, etc. And I should also just mention, uh, I haven't talked about how I released an ebook not that long ago, Level 5 Vegan, a guide for long-term vegans. Uh, so if you want to check that out, you can below. And of course, also let me know in the comment section what you think about all of this and feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.